Today I'm going to give you three quick tips in the trim edit mode in DaVinci Resolve that you may not consider and why I think you can do a lot of the work that you need to within that mode. Now let's start off with what is probably the most obvious reason why you would want to use the trim edit mode. If I wanted to shorten this clip right here, I could always grab the sides like this, maybe do something like this. Obviously we're here left with gaps, so I can come in here, hit delete, and it will bring the clip back and get rid of that gap. Let me control Z out of there. The other thing that we can do in this mode is have it do a ripple delete. The way you do that without changing the keystrokes is control, shift, and the bracket. And what that will do is cut the clip at the point that you have the playhead and then shift everything over to the left. Of course, you can come to the other side do the same thing, control shift and the other bracket, and it will do it in the other direction. So it's stopping the clip at that playhead and then anything to the right, it will get rid of and ripple all the clips back towards the playhead. The first thing I wanna show you is that the trim mode, that's its default position basically, where it will ripple everything. So by being in the trim edit mode, you can actually save some key commands. Whereas we were holding control shift and bracket here, I can press the keys shift and bracket and it will do the same exact thing. In reality, of course, you're just losing one extra key, but it is nice to not have to move your fingers all over the keyboard and just use two keys at the same time to perform essentially the same function. Now this video isn't a review of what the trim edit mode really is. I do have another video that briefly goes over that in relation to another subject. So I'll link that in the description below. But the nice thing about being in this mode is you have options like slip and slide. So you can slide the clip that you wanted to. So let's say we wanted to move this into a different position. This is keeping the starting and ending points the same on the clip. But what you're doing is changing its position on the timeline. So the four up display will show you the end of the clip previous and the beginning of the clip following it. And then of course the other option that you have is the slip. So we can hover right in the middle. We'll have that icon. And if we do something like this, now the clips on either side don't change. You're having the same ending point on the clip before, beginning point on the clip following, but now you're changing what the starting and ending frame is on the clip. But my second tip is let's imagine a scenario where you like this ending frame right here but you saw something at the beginning, you may have accidentally cut this clip too short. What you can do is if you hover right near the edge and what I'll do is drag my mouse to the left, we can actually extend it. Or if needed, we can actually make it shorter. You'll also notice the clips on the right hand side just follow along. So they're moving to the left or the right depending on whether or not we're shortening or extending the clip. And of course it goes the other way too. If we liked the beginning frame of this particular clip but we wanted to extend it a little bit, we can make sure the icon changes. And this white outline that you're seeing is how far that we can extend that clip. That's the end of the clip. And this is nice so that you don't have to be here in selection mode and potentially select these clips here, move it over. And then if you wanted to extend this a little bit, you could, and then you have to delete the gap right here. All you have to do is head into trim mode, which is T. So you just have to hit one key on the keyboard, enter trim mode, and then extend accordingly. And the last tip is something that shows the benefit of the trim edit mode over the selection mode for a specific use case. I'll show you what I mean. If I go back into selection mode and let's bring up our two viewers here. So this is the clip that I have. Let me go ahead and click on this. That's our clip and you can see our in and out points right here. Now, if I didn't like this and I wanted to make the adjustment here, you can actually control the in and out points and have it affect what's on the timeline right from this window. If I maybe like this, when he turns around, I can hit I for in and then maybe we can come back here. That looks good, so we'll hit O for out. If we view our timeline, we're back to where we were before, where there's gaps between the clips. As I mentioned earlier, in trim mode, it takes care of that for you. So let me escape out of there. Control Z, we'll hit T for trim edit mode. 
Here I will choose an endpoint. We'll just choose some random endpoint. And if you look at the timeline, it adjusts automatically. I know when I first started editing, I was stuck on the selection mode for the most part. And as I've started to use the editing systems more and more, whether it be Premiere Pro or DaVinci Resolve, I've gotten used to using the trim edit mode a lot more because it's just so powerful. There are cases that you can obviously go ahead and work in the selection mode, but a lot of the stuff that I wanna do and I want to do quickly, I'll do in the trim edit mode. Hopefully that was helpful. Thank you for watching. I'll put some playlists on the screen right now if you're interested in learning more about DaVinci Resolve, and I'll see you in the next video.